So, I've been watching PSAs for a good seven or eight years, and well, I've seen some horrifying stuff in those years. In this compilation, I will be talking about 75 of the scariest PSAs I have ever watched, and be warned, if I find something truly horrifying, it is going to be intense. There are only two reasons that a PSA would be excluded from this list, that being that the PSA isn't scary, or the PSA is too disturbing and goes against my moral boundaries. That being said, I present the top 75 scariest PSAs. Charlie's chicken. Charlie's chicken. Charlie's chicken. It really says something when even Sears' tamest PSA, and the tamest one on this list, still shows some horrific injuries. I can't help but feel bad for him since, well, this job is probably the only one he could get without having to show his face, which, as we can see, was burnt to a crisp in a fireworks accident. Hey, you ever thought about taking drugs? I don't know. Well, I never really thought about it. Think hard. The first hit's free, but you find me when you need more. The choice is yours. What do you think? Nah, this drug's not worth the time. A message from Concerned Children's Advertisers. Oh, this one's a classic. While most concerned children's advertisers' PSAs are pretty lighthearted, and oftentimes just bizarre at most, they have made some heavy hitters, this one being the biggest example and the most iconic. The PSA itself pulls no punches, showing the consequences of taking drugs, and it's very unsettling. Then again, a lot of the puppets CCA used in their 90s PSAs did kind of have a creepy vibe to them, even if it wasn't always intentional, but the dealer is the biggest example of this, especially when he takes off his shades. The music is what makes this PSA the most unsettling, especially when that riff is paired with flashes of mugshots of real people whose lives have been pretty much destroyed by drugs. A federal court has ordered Altria, R.J. Reynolds Tobacco, Laura Lard, and Philip Morris USA to make this statement about the health effects of smoking. Smoking kills, on average, 1,200 Americans every day. More people die every year from smoking than from murder, AIDS, suicide, drugs, car crashes, and alcohol combined. 
Smoking causes heart disease, emphysema, acute myeloid leukemia, and cancer of the mouth, esophagus, larynx, lung, stomach, kidney, bladder, and pancreas. Smoking also causes reduced fertility, low birth weight in newborns, and cancer of the cervix. A federal court has ordered Laura Lard, Altria, Philip Morris USA, and R.J. Reynolds Tobacco to make this statement about low tar and light cigarettes being as harmful as regular cigarettes. Many smokers switch to low tar and light cigarettes rather than quitting because they think low tar and light cigarettes are less harmful. They are not. Low tar and light cigarette smokers inhale essentially the same amount of tar and nicotine as they would from regular cigarettes. All cigarettes cause cancer, lung disease, heart attacks, and premature death. Lights, low tar, ultralights, and naturals. There is no safe cigarette. A federal court has ordered Philip Morris USA, Laura Lard, R.J. Reynolds Tobacco, and Altria to make this statement about the health effects of secondhand smoke. Secondhand smoke kills over 38,000 Americans each year. Secondhand smoke causes lung cancer and coronary heart disease in adults who do not smoke. Children exposed to secondhand smoke are at an increased risk for sudden infant death syndrome, SIDS, acute respiratory infections, ear problems, severe asthma, and reduced lung function. There is no safe level of exposure to secondhand smoke. A federal court has ordered Philip Morris USA, Laura Lard, R.J. Reynolds Tobacco, and Altria to make this statement about the addictiveness of smoking and nicotine. Smoking is highly addictive. Nicotine is the addictive drug in tobacco. Cigarette companies intentionally design cigarettes with enough nicotine to create and sustain addiction. It's not easy to quit. When you smoke, the nicotine actually changes the brain. That's why quitting is so hard. A federal court has ordered R.J. Reynolds Tobacco, Philip Morris USA, Altria, and Laura Lard to make this statement about designing cigarettes to enhance the delivery of nicotine. R.J. Reynolds Tobacco, Philip Morris USA, Altria, and Laura Lard intentionally design cigarettes to make them more addictive. Cigarette companies control the impact and delivery of nicotine in many ways, including designing filters and selecting cigarette paper to maximize the ingestion of nicotine, adding ammonia to make the cigarette taste less harsh, and controlling the physical and chemical makeup of the tobacco blend. When you smoke, the nicotine actually changes the brain. That's why quitting is so hard. Honestly, I'm surprised these don't get talked about. I have never seen another channel talk about these. I always found them rather unsettling when they came on the TV, and initially I thought I was just overreacting, but no, other people, rightfully so, find these PSAs pretty fucking creepy. And it's because they're a chilling admission from Big Tobacco about the horrible diseases their products cause in smokers, as well as just how much death it causes in comparison to the other main causes of death for Americans. As minimalistic as they are, they're quite creepy, although I think the intent behind the PSAs wasn't to be creepy, but to make sure nobody would pay attention to the ads because they're so minimalistic and still do the bare minimum ordered of them by the U.S. government. Alright, what do we got? Just came in. Heart attack. 5'9", 300 pounds, 32 years old. How the hell does that happen? Fire! <laughs> Can I get a, uh... Could be developing diabetes. You have to make a change. Oh, yeah. You're graduating! <laughs> 
watch TV. You won't even have to leave. You can't do this. Yes, can I get a... Yeah, no, uh, deep dish. You have to make a change. Good job, Jim. You got an A+. Plus. I can't believe you give this child fresh ice cream. I know, but it's the only thing that'll make him stop. This is one of the most fridge horror PSAs I have ever seen. And for those of you who don't know what the term fridge horror means, it's basically a TV tropes term referring to something that is only really horrifying the more you think about it. Here we see the story of Jim, a man who is in the hospital after having a heart attack at 32. We then see time rewind to see that he's been in a cycle of obsessively playing video games, not exercising, and eating fast food and sweets, and what's really creepy is that he's been fed this crap since he was a literal baby. This PSA pulls no punches in demonstrating that parents influence their children's eating and exercise habits well into adulthood, and what really adds to the fridge horror of this PSA is that he has a wife and kids. For all we know, we don't know the outcome of Jim. He could have died in surgery and left his his wife a widow and his kids without a father. And that's really sad to think about. Welcome to the Brain Warehouse. We provide new brains to cure and You a puker, eh? You know about the new spew stopper? No, I'm alright, mate. Discover reduces paranoia in 95% of what kind of seems And the no more... Ah, the Freak Out Free X50. You know, back in the old days, before these came out, you lost it on weed and phew, that was it. Imagine that. You want it installed? With stronger strains than ever before, the more you mess with cannabis, the more it could mess with your mind. If you'd like to find out more, Talk to Frank. Frank made a lot of PSAs that were darkly comedic, the most notable being Pablo the Drug Mule Dog, but this is definitely one of the more unnerving PSAs they've ever made. Not just because of the disembodied brains being sold, although that is a pretty big factor, but also because of the fucking salesman that, you know, won't shut up throughout the entirety of this PSA. That plastered on cartoony smile of his is just so fucking creepy, and it's revealed that he's been trying his own products from the scars on his head. Yeah. Don't laugh at the name of the character, guys. There's nothing funny about this subject. It's never easy talking about a stillbirth or a miscarriage, and it's probably even harder to explain that to a child who's just old enough to understand the concept of death. This is one of those fridge horror PSAs where they just become sadder and scarier the more you think about them. 
Zaza saw his mother understandably broken down over the loss of her baby, and I can only imagine how hard that is for a child his age to witness. It's fucking depressing, man. This PSA is one of those PSAs that rely entirely on implications, and it hits like a ton of bricks. The memories the kid in this PSA has are absolutely heartbreaking, since it's clear their earliest memories are of being beaten in increasingly painful ways. First the flip-flop, then the belt, then the paddle, and finally what appears to be a discipline which is a type of whip used in Christian sects to cleanse someone of their sins. The implications of this child being cleansed of sins on Christmas Day are not lost on me. Rabbits are scary. They're like, <laughs> and it's like they're looking for people to eat, and I don't really like it. Or pigs are pankies and boy pigs. I was six on the 50th of November. Do babies, mommies teach them how to laugh, or do they know already? My nana's skin doesn't really fit her face. I can't help getting hurt. I'm too big for my boots. Darlings have an Ivanka. Have an Ivanka, Mummy. You like it. I don't have a bed thing because my mum's gonna get back till really late. Have an Ivanka. <laughs> Shut it! You're doing my head in. I'm warning you. Can I go to your house? Why? Because I, I don't want to go back to my house. I'm a mistake. So is my fault. Daddy broke my house on the floor. I'm a little girl. I'm a little girl. I'm a little girl. It's a secret. I'm not allowed to tell. The NSPCC are known for making PSAs that are incredibly hard to watch, but this following PSA, while being a more lighthearted example, is still one of them, especially since you know these kids at the end are just repeating what they've heard, hearing the little girl call herself a mistake and the other one call herself a cow, it fucking hurts to watch. It's also not the only PSA will hear a child say something this negative about themselves in on this list. You wouldn't do this to a teddy bear. You wouldn't teach it to dance by burning its feet. You wouldn't drill through its nose and palate to make room for a rope or a chain. You wouldn't hack off its paws to make soup or tear out its gallbladder to take as a tonic. But every day, these unspeakable things happen to real bears all over the world. Help us stop it. 
call WSPA's Liberty Campaign on 071-793-0540. I don't know if it's just me, but the mere idea of destroying a plushie, an innocent childhood toy, makes me really upset. Since it's childhood memories, it's too cute to harm. But it's even sadder when we see that everything done to this poor teddy bear, which tears up at the end, is done to real bears worldwide. And considering that other than sheep and otters, bears are some of my favorite animals, that's really hard to think about. This PSA is short, simple, and brutal. That sickening crunch is what really brings up the scare factor on this one, not even just the rotted orange. It's unnervingly quiet up until that crunch, and to be honest, I think that's what makes that crunch so jarring and sickening. My name's Mark Brandon Choppery. A lot of people think I'm a tough guy. I'm not a tough guy, but I've broken a lot of men that thought they were tough guys. The lowest thing in jail is a woman basher and a rapist. If you bashed a woman, well, you're a weak, gutless individual. If you come to fucking jail for bashing a woman or raping a woman, you will get fucking dealt with. You will fucking suffer. We will break your fucking neck, you low, gutless, weak, fucking mice. Be afraid. Because if you come to jail, you're going to have every bloody reason to be afraid. <laughs> There's no Australian criminal more infamous than Chopper Reed, but even a hardened, cruel gang member like him had standards. People who hurt women and children are pretty much universally the most detested criminals in prison, especially by people like Chopper, who stated he was molested as a child. In fact, harming the innocent was something even Chopper would refuse to do, or so he says. And if you treat a woman in such a horrible way that you get sent to prison for it, I am sure Chopper would have made your life hell while he was still alive. Burger King and the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission want you to know about the voluntary recall of this Pokemon Pokeball. The ball may pose a suffocation hazard to children under three. Throw the ball away or return it to Burger King. The safety of your child is of the utmost importance to us. I find this PSA creepy for the same reasons that I find the government-mandated big tobacco ones creepy. As minimalistic as it is, it's an admission that a product killed someone in this case, an innocent baby that died from suffocating on half of the Pokeball toy. What makes this PSA creepier is that apparently, the Consumer Product Safety Commission had to pressure Burger King into recalling this toy because recalling it would have affected their bottom line. Since before the recall, this was one of their most successful promotions.
Normally, internet safety PSAs are incredibly cheesy, but this one is a rare exception. It starts off fairly innocent, with a kid looking up animals, but then we're hit with the child coming across multiple incredibly graphic sex terms before thankfully being redirected by a parent. I'm probably going to repeat this point that this PSA makes several times in this countdown, that point being, don't fucking leave your kids alone on the internet at a young age. It will expose them to things no child should see. Trust me, I wouldn't be part of the PSA or PIF community if it wasn't for me having almost unlimited internet access. Or maybe instead of um, exposing them to things they should never see, it might just turn them into a furry like me. I don't know. I can't fucking predict the future. Once upon a time on Meadow's farm, a little lamb named Clarence was born. Clarence was a caracal lamb with beautiful tight black curls. Welcome to the world, said Clarence's mum, ever so proud. Well, this certainly isn't the Mary Had a Little Lamb that I remember. Seriously, you can be fluffy like me without, you know, slaughtering sheep and skinning lambs moments after their birth. There's a thing called shearing, guys. Shame, too. Caracal sheep are incredibly pretty, unlike me. I'm just a regular, huh. You know what, I never, I never, I never thought of it, but what kind of sheep am I? Eh, leave it in the comments. I'm sure I'm not the only other sheep nerd. Hiya. Enjoying your program? I'm having a great night. Been messaging your daughter. Have been for weeks. I really get her, she says. Make her feel all grown up. Oh, those pictures she sent me. Nice. I told her she was beautiful. <laughs> she really fell for that. She's coming over tomorrow for a few drinks. We'll see what happens. Cannot wait. This PSA makes me feel a way I cannot comprehend. The creepy, nonchalant way the nonce in the phone talks makes my skin crawl. It's clear he sees nothing wrong with his actions towards the viewer's daughter and intends to dump her as soon as he uses her. To him, it's just business. That business being getting his rocks off with underage girls. And he's very aware of the fact that the girl he's been messaging genuinely thinks he loves her. Like, I'm going to say it, hey, this many times throughout this video. Please, please monitor what your kids are doing online or through SMS. There are bad people that lurk on the internet. I'm one of the good ones on the internet, I'd like to think, I, but not everyone's like me on the internet. There are bad people, I would know.
Well, based Greenpeace for pressuring Nestle to stop using palm oil that isn't sustainably harvested. My grievances towards Nestle, which are a story for another time aside, this PSA certainly doesn't pull any punches in fucking anything it does. Whether disgusting the viewer with a sickening crunch and subsequent blood spurt of the orangutan finger or straight up shocking them with footage of cowering orangutans in a wrecked rainforest along with their screams of terror, I'd say this PSA gets its point across pretty well, even to a greedy ass corporation like Nestle. Not again. Just calm down. Everything's cozy in cozy town. <laughs> Anxiety from nicotine cravings can keep you up. For quitting resources, go to teen.smokefree.gov. Damn it, Isabel! Which one of your friends left the portal to hell open again? Jokes aside, honestly, I didn't think I'd see a PSA from this year here, but seeing it on Gold Starman 2097's countdown, I can see why he found it creepy. The fiery monster is a perfect metaphor for anxiety, and seeing it juxtaposed with a typically wholesome environment like Animal Crossing, or a very faithful rip of it at the very least, is quite jarring. Do you forget little things, Every time. like your keys, oh, no. putting out the bins, Valentine's Day, Mom! Lou Roll, no, you said that you were bringing your wallet money, <laughs> umbrellas, the batteries in your smoke alarm. <laughs> Remember, <laughs> test them every week, change them every year, push the button. Not your luck. I've seen this on so many compilations of PSAs, and yet it always stays so impactful. That mood whiplash is insane, especially considering how lighthearted it was initially. That poor father's one mistake of forgetting the batteries for his smoke alarm ruined his happy life. That's one of the little things you should never make the mistake of forgetting. This is one cruel story, especially given how abruptly it ends. It's a beautiful art style, reminiscent of Alice in Wonderland, even. But unfortunately, that makes the PSA all the more twisted when we see the child in real life suffocating in her sleep from her asthma. End of story.
This PSA is a work of art, and honestly, I would put it in a museum. As cool as the stuff looks getting decimated by a bullet in slow motion, the worry that the child's head would be one of the many things decimated was very strong. Thankfully, that bullet just formed a slogan, that being, Stop the bullet, kill the gun, but still that worry was very palpable. Yeah, I admit, this PSA is really more scary when you start to think about it, when you realize young girls at the time were bombarded with an insane amount of unrealistic beauty standards that would most likely give them body image issues, which is something the beauty industry profits off of. Truth be told, everyone, as long as they're a good person at their core, is beautiful, and don't let the beauty executives tell you any different. I may just be a sheep on the internet, but I know everybody watching this video is beautiful. Y'all fucking slay. Go off. Kings, queens, and gender neutral monarchs. This PSA pulls no punches as it shows a machine gun with the amount of bullets that would be required to wipe out the remaining black rhinos. The music is quite haunting too, but unfortunately this PSA's efforts in scaring the shit out of the viewer were all for naught since in 2011 the western black rhino was formally declared extinct. I'm very bad. It's the only explanation. I must have done something very bad to deserve this. I've been locked in, without food or water, by my best friend. Let me go. Please. I won't do it again. Whatever it was that I did. I'm so thirsty. I don't want to be let go now. Just a drink will do. But have I been so bad that I can't have a drink? Tired now. Don't need anything anymore. Only sleep.
I'd just like to see my friend once more, to say sorry for the terrible thing that I did. Wonder what it was. This is one of the saddest RSPCA PSAs out there. We see this poor dog try to rationalize why her best friend is locking her in this yard with no food or water, thinking she did something bad when in all actuality, her owner is just plain cruel. This one has a somewhat happier ending than its brother PSA Swim, because we see the dog get rescued, whereas in Swim, the narrator dog and his brother are thrown into the river and drowned in a bag, but it's still heart-wrenching. Oh, how well this PSA has aged. As the PSA says, we shouldn't let Russia's charm cover its atrocities against the press and the Russian people. Because here we see a dead girl, an arrested woman, then the censored press, all hidden behind the veneer of a regular Matryoshka. As beautiful as Russia's culture is, its government will taint that beauty as long as it is in power, and therefore we should not let its charm hide its atrocities. This PSA has such a creepy atmosphere, and I'm glad I see it talked about a lot. Those crows still send shivers down my spine. Fuck it, everything in this PSA is creepy as hell, whether it's the cigarette being a candle wick on a grave, the reverb on the crows, or the general eerie silence of this PSA. This is probably Poland's creepiest PSA I have ever seen. I don't have much to say about it though, well, not much that hasn't already been said. <gasps> Roddy, come on out from under there. Come on. I saw a monster in the closet. There is no such thing as monsters. But I saw it. Jeff, could you come up here? Okay, pal, it's time for bed. There's no such thing as monsters.
If I had to give an example of my favorite subversion of Chekhov's gun, which would be a pretty unlikely scenario, it would probably be this PSA. This PSA looks right out of a storybook, and it's got a twist ending I could have never expected. A total subversion of Chekhov's gun, where we don't even know the gun is there until the very end, when it's extremely relevant to the plot. In this case, it's more of Chekhov's monster, the monster being a example of foreshadowing. Unfortunately though, as an American PSA reviewer, this isn't the first time I've seen a child shoot themselves or someone else in a PSA, but this is definitely one of the more jarring instances. Please. Please, to parents watching, especially here in the States, keep your guns locked up, because here's the thing, a lot of young children don't know the sheer power a gun truly has. Well, this PSA certainly didn't pull any punches. Even if we didn't hear a crash, I'd say that the candles blowing out as the tires screeched to a halt was more haunting than a car crash would ever be. Holy shit. Six years old. Forever. Meaning this kid died on his birthday because a driver was speeding. Holy shit, that's heavy. A piece of meat in the shape of a man without a mind is not a human being. Whether the body be deathly ill, damaged by accident, mentally blank because of brain deficiency, or criminally insane, those people who are so mentally defective that they cannot live in society should, as soon as they are identified as defective, be humanely dispatched. It's a shame that people still think this way towards the disabled, because even when me and my sister were born, ignorant jackasses were saying that because my sister has Down Syndrome, she's a burden to society and should have been aborted. Obviously I do not feel this way towards my own sister because I love her. She's incredibly intelligent, kind, and caring. But the fact that a Mensa member said something like this, somebody who's supposed to be really smart, really says something. Ignorance really does know no barriers. It's a debilitating disease that consumes whoever it infects. People with disabilities have just as much value as able-bodied people do, and anyone who says otherwise is either fucking lying through their teeth, or is a ignorant fucking idiot.
Mobile device theft can put your personal safety at risk. It can also compromise your personal information. Protect your data. Protect yourself. Oh dear. Oh dear. This is some uncanny valley shit right here. We see people getting pickpocketed and robbed by these creepy faceless figures who seem capable of fucking stealing the likeness of whoever they pickpocket as long as they steal the mobile device of whoever they've just robbed. Fucking creepy, dude. You work in a bank, maybe a small business, and you're held up by an armed robber. Cooperate. But remember, you are armed too. Your eyes. Use them to record his physical appearance, especially marks and scars, his clothing, the type of weapon used, the direction of escape, the getaway car, and its license number. Remember, they can rob you, but they can't rob you blind. Another creepy Canadian anti-crime PSA. Who would have thought? Well, there's a reason this made it to the list. It doesn't seem too creepy on paper, it's just instructing viewers to use their eyes to record the events of a robbery, but in practice, because of the lighting, the creepy camera work, and the droning music, it's been the subject of a few nightmares of mine. Here's one time it doesn't matter who your neighbor is. Here's the other. Life's too short. Stop the hate. It's a shame that this PSA is 31 years old and yet its message is still relevant to this day. Our lives really are too short to dedicate to hate like the neo-Nazis and Klansmen in this PSA have, because let's be honest, in your cradle and in your grave, it doesn't matter who your neighbor is. Also, that klaxon is quite jarring, even though it's revealed to just be a clipped stock scream. This was the first PSA I ever remember giving me nightmares, and while looking back on it, I can understand why. The abrupt change from the silly funniest home video style montage to the very real cries of the children when they fall is quite jarring, and I'm someone who gets very anxious when little kids cry. None of these kids look to be any older than 3, too, so they have no sense of danger. Even though I'm not a parent, I mean, I'm 19, so I'd have to have made some not-too-great life choices to be a, a parent at 19. It still is one of my biggest fears when ch little kids get themselves into dangerous situations, because I'm aware they have no sense of danger.
Inside this 14 square meter container, at night, the temperature can drop down to minus 40 degrees. At noon, it can rise up to 50 degrees. Of course, no goods are stored inside, yet it's not empty. A journalist has been locked inside for 12 years. Donate and help us save independent journalism. This is definitely one of the more fridge horror PSAs I've ever seen. And unfortunately, it's based on a true story, that being the story of Dawit Azak, an Eritrean Swedish journalist who has been held in a shipping container for 22 years now after being arrested without trial, but for 12 straight years, being imprisoned in a shipping container that experiences extreme highs and lows out in the desert in total solitude probably absolutely destroys your mental state. So I'd assume that if he is still alive, he is most likely completely insane. PETA compared animal abusers to Jeffrey Dahmer in a PSA 2, but I think it was better executed in this PSA. Obviously, in both instances, the comparisons were for shock value, but the difference between this PSA and PETA's print ad was that in this PSA, the comparisons to Dahmer were well done. And this PSA also shows that those who deliberately hurt animals are often very likely to hurt people later on in life. Where's, where's dinner? Well, I thought you'd be home a couple of hours ago and what, I what, put what, everything what, away. What, so what I is did this? Pizza? What, a uh, uh, pizza? If you had just called me, I would have known what- Dinner ready is a pizza. I didn't know you'd be so late. Let me ask you, you something. Is, is, is it I, uh, too much to have dinner I waiting so when I go home? Please don't be so loud. Don't show me what to do! You shut up! I thought you'd be home I can earlier. get pizza at work! I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll do something better. I'll, I'll you get you something better. better. Let go of me! Get in the kitchen! Oh, no! Much as I ironically like to make get back in the kitchen jokes, this dad is a scumbag for beating his wife over not having dinner ready. And I could feel that slap. How could this scumbag not admit he hurt his wife after that? And the poor kid looks terrified as his mom is being beaten, making that line hit all the more hard. Children have to sit by and watch, really. What is your excuse? Una sola línea que marca el límite entre el cansancio y la vitalidad. La cruzas. Y ella también te cruza. Te cruza la nariz y la cabeza. Y te la divide en dos. Y una línea más en cuatro. Y otra más. Van ocho. Y vos duro. Como si nada.
Argentina has made some pretty creepy PSAs, and this is definitely one of them. The metaphor of your body being a statue and drugs causing fissures that break it apart is definitely executed hauntingly here, and the announcer's deadpan tone as he describes how drugs destroy their users only adds to the generally creepy vibe that this PSA has. I've wanted to discuss this PSA for a while, and what better countdown than this one? I've always found the general idea of this PSA creepy. An old man who decides the fate of people who make bad calls on intersections with the spin of a wheel, and when it lands on death, it really turns up the shock factor since we outright see a car get t-boned at high speed ensuring the driver's death there exist a few variants of this psa but this one is definitely the most shocking This very moment, the rider is protected, but it only takes 0 0.03 seconds for the sneaker to burst, 0 0.6 seconds for the jeans to disintegrate, the hoodie gone in 0 0.03 seconds. Then, like a human crayon, his flesh is shredded by the coarse bitumen. Another newer PSA on this list. This PSA is absolutely brutal, and while I can never expect anything less of TAC, I mean, they've been scaring Australians into being safe on the roads since 1987, a solid 36 years, this is definitely one of the more graphic PSAs they've made in recent years. We basically see a motorcyclist crash and get the worst fucking case of road rash I have ever seen as he becomes a human crayon, as the PSA so tactfully puts it. And just when you thought we'd be spared one of TAC's notorious gory shots, we get a shot of the poor guy's eviscerated foot, a lovely shade of crimson. Good to see that. TAC is carrying on its long-standing tradition of scaring the shit out of Australians to this day. Now this will be much easier if I close my eyes. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I think I've had a little too much cordial. <laughs> Watch me! I can fly! <laughs> Another PSA I'd never seen anyone but Gold Starman 2097 talk about until now. And while I find it creepy for the same reason I find Funniest Home Video creepy, that being, we see little kids hurt themselves while under parental supervision, and it's played off as lighthearted in the first half. We literally see a young boy break his back, which is a pretty painful injury I hope to never go through. Another young boy cut his face up by tripping. And the most hard-hitting part is a young baby on life support, highly implied to be barely hanging on because he knocked himself out tripping on the side of the pool. Also, the Cheery Calliope soundtrack is really fucking creepy. Especially when paired with these, you know, pretty off-color images. When you have a hole in your neck, don't face the shower head. Suction out your dough before you eat. Crouch. Don't bend over. You don't want to lose the food in your stomach. Don't use spray paint. Be very careful, Shaby. I think this is the first PSA I ever had vivid memories of. Because I remember seeing it on the TV for the first time when I think I was seven years old, though it aired on TV well into my early teens. Well, the loud robotic voices don't scare me as much as they used to when it aired on the TV because, hey, at least on my computer I can fucking turn it down. There's a reason this PSA is a nightmarish core memory of mine. The raspy or robotic voices and holes in the necks of the speakers are a jarring visual and auditory reminder of the damage smoking does to your body, and it's because of this PSA that I don't think I'll ever smoke in this lifetime. Welshman and New Zealander jokes, as well as jokes about TLC airing much more shocking things than this these days aside, this PSA is definitely the most shocking internet safety PSA I've ever seen, considering we literally watch a kid watching a man commit bestiality with a sheep, and then we watch this kid proceed to do the same thing to his dog who whimpers in pain. It's definitely quite upsetting to see the internet corrupt a child like this in such a short span of time, but arguably it's the audio of the sheep fucking that makes my skin crawl when I watch this PSA, because uh, it is fucking nasty. Get out! 
This isn't normal. But on meth, it is. Let's go! Let's go! Come on! They're out there. This isn't normal. Who are you? But on meth? Who are you? It is. I'll kill you! Hey guys. You can do anything you want to me for your 50 bucks. Well, what about her? Sure. This isn't normal. But on meth, it is. This isn't normal. But on meth, it is. Honestly, I was initially only going to put OD on here, since it's the scariest out of all of these, but all these PSAs are shocking in their own ways, and because they're all part of the same campaign, I decided to put them all on here. In the first one, we see a group of teens ransacking a house for anything that could be used to buy more meth, while a man is knocked out in front of his daughter. In the second one, we see a young man go into a violent, meth-induced, paranoid breakdown, convinced that people are going to kill him. In the third one, we see a girl sell herself and her sister to creepy men on the street for a mere $50. And finally, we see the aforementioned boy overdosing while all his equally methed out friends act as though this is normal. This whole campaign definitely does not skimp on the brutality, and therefore that's why I decided to put the entirety of Wave 4 as this entry.
These PSAs really demonstrate just how quick we are willing to share someone's suffering to the internet in order to gain clout. And that's what makes these PSAs all the more horrifying, is just how much it shows we've let the internet dehumanize us. Every shocking thing these days is recorded on someone's phone and shared on social media. How that woman in the second PSA was all too eager to use the maid's suicide attempt to make her look bad to her employers. And while I wouldn't recommend going into a burning building, the man who was recording the woman screaming for help had a very useful tool on hand to call for help, but no, he just chose to film her burning to death, most likely to share on social media. And well... I'd know something about there definitely being an audience for suffering on the internet, considering I'm a mid-Gen Z kid who grew up when Best Girl and Live Leak were a thing, and I'd get sent horrifying shit from there by classmates, but it's still sick to film and post these sorts of things. I know I risk sounding like a boomer, but there really are times in which it's best to just put the phone down and not film or post certain things. They're feral, cruel, and ruthless. It's in their nature. It makes me sick. Vermin. Vermin. They're wandering packs. These animals destroying people's lives. Perhaps sterilization? <laughs> huh? Something needs to be done. What's really frightening is that every line of dialogue in this film was a comment made by the public on UK newspaper websites about children.
Join our campaign against the demonization of young people. I sincerely hope people making comments like these on forums are just doing a sick form of trolling, since it's genuinely sickening that people hold these views towards the younger generations. I get it, the generational divide is a barrier that is hard to break down, but does it really justify the promotion of sterilizing and murdering children? As shocking as the visuals are in this PSA, I mean, it doesn't get much more fucking shocking than seeing teenagers shot at on video, but what's really terrifying is that everything said is, like the PSA said, quoted verbatim from UK news sites by what I assume were adults with a severe contempt for the current generation of the time. Let that fucking sink in. For the uninitiated, an air gun is a slightly less powerful version of a firearm, well at least the type of air gun they're talking about in this PSA, and the probably most well known type of air gun here in the states are airsoft guns, which are basically nerf guns on steroids. They shoot pellets and they look really similar to real guns. And if you shoot at someone with a powerful enough air gun, you can do serious damage, like what happened to the doll right here. So basically, I'm just gonna say, if you're gonna let your kids play with toy guns, I'd say just go with Nerf guns. Don't give your kids BB guns or airsoft guns as, as toys unless, you know, you, you want them blowing each other's faces apart, just saying. What's the cheapest way to clear a minefield then? Oh, 22 kids and a football. <laughs> Heard about the landmine victim that had blue eyes? One blue this way, one blue that way. <laughs> <laughs> what goes? Hop, skip, hop, skip, hop, skip, bang. A girl played hopscotch in a minefield. <laughs> oh, yeah. Every year, over 26,000 people are maimed or killed by landmines, senselessly. It's a sick joke. The Mines Advisory Group clears both mines and unexploded bombs, but we're desperately short of money. Please call us on 0800 0723 999 and give whatever you can. The sickest joke is not clearing landmines. Admittedly, the blue eyes joke did get a laugh out of me, as incredibly sick as these jokes being told are. But these photos of real landmine victims who are either dead or clearly in pain from, you know, being blown the fuck apart, are far from funny and are the sickest joke of all. 26,000 people every year at the time being maimed and killed by these buried explosives, that's far from funny. It's a shame that this group was so underfunded, they provide a necessary service to those whose homes have been torn apart by war.
While most of the RSPCA's odds from Australia are very light-hearted, this one is a rare exception. It comes off as a domestic abuse PSA first, but the horror is turned up exponentially when dog whimpers come out of the battered woman. Then the statistic that 37% of violent criminals admit to being cruel to animals in their childhood comes in, and we see that the dog has been beaten so much that the poor thing pissed itself on the floor. The implications this has that our wife beater had started out beating on the dog before he moved on to beating up his partners aren't lost on me either, and they make this PSA all the more horrifying. The negatives of speeding. You kill. You maim. You disable. You disfigure. <laughs> Positives. Just nightmares. I just killed a boy. Forever. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Exceed the limit by any amount. Expect the worst. Every K over. Is a killer. This PSA is basically the scariest Queensland transport PSAs compiled into one negative filtered PSA. The black and white negative filter that the clips are ran through is creepy enough, and even without it, the clips of people being killed, maimed, and disfigured by speeders would still be freaky on their own. But that slightly distorted voiceover of the announcer is what puts this PSA so high up on the list. It sends fucking chills down my spine. No positives. Just nightmares. Forever. Oh, like the ones this PSA gave me? This is a relatively obscure PSA compared to some of the others I've spoken about, but this PSA is incredibly unnerving, and the art style is both gritty and great. It's incredibly minimalistic and quiet. Basically, it's a PSA against neglecting and ignoring children since it hinders their growth. The final time the child is ignored, he explodes, and only burns on the paper are left of him. All the while, creepy violin screeches and strikes play. Unfortunately, not too much information exists on Island with Field, but the two PSAs it made were incredibly unnerving and surreal, this one being the most unnerving and surreal. Oh, <laughs> 
¿Aló? Señor, el pollo que me trajo está crudo. ¡No te lo voy a volver a repetir antes! ¡Ven para acá! Because I'm an English language channel and an American who has not much more than a basic understanding of Spanish, I only found this PSA from a Peruvian member of my server. We hear a man just eating his dinner while his neighbor screams at and whips his child, and the man is more concerned about the quality of his chicken than, you know, the fact that a fucking innocent kid is being beaten right next door. As the PSA states, the one ignoring the child's plight is just as much of a son of a bitch as the one whipping and yelling at his kid is. Al encontrarnos nuevamente bebiendo, nos preguntamos, ¿en dónde estoy? ¿Hacia dónde voy? ¿Qué me está pasando? Las respuestas las encontramos en Alcohólicos Anónimos, por medio de un cambio de vida. Vida que deseamos compartir. Mayor información en el grupo de tu comunidad. Another PSA that one of my server members directed me to, and I could see why. From what I could gather, the man in the PSA thought the only way to escape his alcoholism was by ending his life, and if that wasn't creepy enough, the cheery piano music and dark filter don't help make this PSA any less unsettling. But it does have a good message, that being not to give up on life before seeking help. Jesus. Right, come in. It's been a while since I talked about this PSA. In fact, I think the last time I talked about it, it was in my most viewed video, that being the top 10 scariest domestic violence PSAs, and my point about it having the most shocking ending in a PSA, like, ever, still stands. We hear a man abusing his wife through the wall, and that's quite jarring already, but it only gets worse when the man in the room stands up. I grew hopeful when I saw him grab the bat and walk to the abuser's apartment, but that hope shattered like glass when I heard those five words, thought you could use this, and was revealed to have handed the bat to the abuser. Holy shit, that wasn't a twist I ever saw coming. Well done, Unifem. Essex Place Emergency. 
Okay. Uh, hello. Um, I need police and a forensics team to my address, please. What do you mean? What's happened? My friend and I got into an altercation and I am the only one who came out alive. Are you telling me you've killed somebody? I first met Lewis online. He's my friend. Lewis is my friend. Lewis is my friend. Lewis is a mate. Lewis is my friend. Lewis is Greg's friend. He runs the fastest FPS server I've ever seen. The guys and I play Battlefield with him every day. He's an awesome programmer. He's an awesome programmer. He is an awesome programmer. He's an awesome programmer. He's a good programmer. Lewis lives in New York and has his own apartment. Lewis says he works for the government. Lewis works for, Lewis the, gov works for the government. Lewis works for the government. Lewis works for the government. Lewis runs his own business. He says I should quit school and start my own company. He says I've got the right sort of mind. Lewis is a millionaire. Lewis is a millionaire. Lewis is a millionaire. Lewis is a millionaire. <laughs> Lewis is a liar. Lewis says my friends are talking about me behind my back. He says that someone with a brain like mine is wasted on people like them. I'm going to be a programmer like Lewis. Lewis is a liar. Liar. Lewis is a liar. Lewis is okay. Mum and Dad say they're going to take my computer away. They say Lewis is dangerous. We've been friends for over a year now. Lewis says they can't do that. Lewis says they're trying to control me. Lewis is a liar. Liar. Lewis is a liar. Lewis is controlling my son. Lewis says he's ill and needs to hand over his company to me. But we need to meet. He says he'll pay for the taxi. Lewis says I'm really gifted and he trusts me. Lewis is a liar. Liar. Lewis is a liar. Liar. Lewis is a liar. Liar. Lewis is my friend. Are you telling me you've killed somebody? Yes, I am. On the 17th of February, 2014, Lewis Staines, an online friend who Breck believed was a real friend, lured him to his flat where he was brutally murdered. We tried to convince him that he was in danger. If only Breck had believed us, my beautiful boy would still be alive today. This whole story is one of the saddest stories I've ever heard since, well, people I thought were friends online have turned out to be horrible people, and I can only imagine the pain Breck's mom has gone through following her son's murder. Breck fully believed that Lewis wanted to help him make his dreams come true, and... Lewis was good at manipulating people like Breck, who was just 14 at the time, may I add. Lewis was cold, controlling, and manipulative, and unfortunately, when someone is as controlling as Lewis, they pretty much convince whoever they're manipulating that everyone but them is trying to control them. I'm glad this story is being used as a teaching device, to prevent more kids like Breck from falling victim to people like Lewis. Donald.
If the driver of this car had kept his speed to 100k, here's where he would have stopped. If he'd stopped here, his wife wouldn't take the full impact of the crash and die instantly. If he'd stopped here, the last thing Sally will ever hear wouldn't be the sound of her own neck breaking. And Nikki wouldn't break several ribs and her collarbone. As for Jim, well, Jim could have avoided broken bones and a broken heart. But anyway, it's too late for all that now, because this isn't where it stops. It's where it all begins. Oh dear God, this always is a rough watch. It starts off so wholesome too, with the kids singing Old MacDonald. But then... The PSA hits you like the truck Jim's car was about to hit. And dear God, the way the narrator describes the injuries that kill his wife and one of his daughters is incredibly vivid. Especially the description of the last sound Sally ever hears being the sound of her own neck breaking. And we know that this is only the beginning of Jim's life of trauma from this speeding accident. And the pained cries of one of the girls crying for her mom always hit me right where it hurts. Holy fuck, this PSA is quite possibly the most brutal traffic safety PSA I have ever seen. В этой жизни надо попробовать все. Наркотик точно так же держит крепко, затягивает навсегда. Well, this is certainly a way to say you're killing yourself if you do drugs, showing a man hanging himself. Basically, the message is that drugs, like a noose, hold strong and your addiction tightens forever. Like hanging from a noose, doing drugs shouldn't be tried under any circumstances, though this is certainly the most disturbing way of demonstrating this, Russia. Please keep matches away from children. I personally think this is by far the scariest fire safety PSA I have ever seen. The burned home, which is a destroyed shell of its former self, and the frantic voices of the family calling for each other. I still have flashbacks of the first time I saw this PSA, and to be honest, it's a reason why I don't typically watch PSA countdowns at night. I can only assume that all but one of them, that being the one trudging through this house, died in the fire that destroyed their home, and that's scary as hell. Seriously, lighters and matches are not to be fucked with, and they should be kept out of reach of kids that don't know any better.
Well, here we have a PSA that haunted my nightmares for weeks the first time I saw it. These mangled hands are a sight that have permanently burned themselves into my sheep brain. Holy fucking shit. I remember checking my own hands after watching this PSA to make sure they were still intact. And well, each time I ever lit fireworks, I kept this PSA in mind. So I guess that's my trauma working to my advantage. This year, my mom got me the perfect bag for back to school. These colorful binders help me stay organized. These headphones are just what I need for studying. These new sneakers are just what I need for the new year. This jacket is a real must have. My parents got me the skateboard I wanted. It's pretty cool. These scissors really come in handy in art class. These colored pencils, too. These new socks, they can be a real lifesaver. <laughs> I finally got my own phone to stay in touch with my mom. Well, kids, we're in the big leagues now. The PSA itself is brutal, but there's a reason I find Sandy Hook Promise PSAs in general disturbing. That being, the entire reason the organization exists in the first place is because 20 fucking children were gunned down along with 7 teachers at Sandy Hook Elementary in 2012. Arguably, this is the group's most brutal and visceral PSA I've ever seen because we're treated to kids using the items bought for the back to school season to defend themselves and escape a school shooting, which is unfortunately something we in America are all too familiar with because, well, we have fucking shitty mental health care and incredibly lax gun laws. But I'm not gonna fucking soapbox here, I'm just fucking sick of the fact that it took a pandemic to, you know, go a few years without a school shooting. Hi, you alright? What's up? Hello? Hi. Oh man, with my fish fingers. <laughs> what is it? No, no, no. Do you want to pick up the kids from school tomorrow? Yeah, if you don't mind. No, blood. That radio mm -hmm. still was big, I mm -hmm. like. Hey, no, it was Bad, serious. Man, big, I bet you any money, Anton flopped the show. Hey, look, you know, he's flopped. It doesn't always. matter what the occasion, birthday, christenings, my man always finds a way to flop the show. I'll tell you something, though. It's a good thing you man never come because he was a big hype thing going about last night. See, that's why I like having younger brothers and sisters. I stay indoors while the beef stays outside. Ah, uh, yes, the famous PSA where a mom fucking shoots her son in the back of the head execution style. Like so many other PSAs, this one starts off lighthearted with a nice lunch of fish fingers, but then the mother pulls out a fucking gun and execution style blows a hole through her son's head, then drops it looking like she is fucking possessed while dropping the gun. Also, the cries of the family members are quite disturbing too. I guess it gets the moral 
a cross of keeping quiet about gun crime being like pulling the trigger yourself well? サイキン覚醒剤は家庭の主婦や青少年サラリーマンを蝕んでいます。興味半分の1本の覚醒剤。それがあなた自身を廃人にしてしまうばかりか。あなたの家庭をも破壊します。This PSA doesn't sugarcoat fucking anything, it is brutal right from the start. From the heartbreaking cries of the very young child, who's likely witnessing his mom overdosing on drugs, to the menacing shot of the needle, to the loud siren-like piano playing, this PSA pulls out all the stops in order to prove its point. The fact that we just watched a mother overdose on screen in front of her very young child, who will most likely be traumatized for the rest of his life because of this, also adds to the horror of this PSA. In fact, fun fact, it was so distressing that it was quickly pulled from Japanese airwaves. Bon, vous faites quoi là On est sur le parking et on commence à se faire chier donc... Ah T'es con hein circulation à 3h30 sur la départementale 22. Et Il a perdu la vie, madame. Ça va vous demander beaucoup de courage, madame, mais je vais vous demander de venir nous accompagner pour reconnaître votre fils. Vous êtes combien dans le véhicule 
Et ça, je véhicule le premier secours numéro 4. Accident de la circulation confirmé. Deux véhicules de tourisme en collision à force cinétique. Nous demandons ambulance de réanimation du SAMU. Nous ne n'avons pas le moyen de dire une personne inconsciente. Aussi une personne. Ouais. Le bébé, tu le mets dans l'ambulance. Deux personnes logées avec un enfant qu'on a fait sortir. D'accord Voilà. Véhicule fortement endommagé, euh, je pense qu'il va falloir un moyen de désincarcération à ce niveau-là. J'ai une personne a priori euh, Delta Charlie Delta. Madame, je vais me calmement. On a une personne à l'état de mort apparente qui est sur le sol. Avec euh, perte de substance crânienne importante. qui a plein de dessins sur les bras. Allez, on le sort, là, on y va. Il faut le sortir, il est en arrêt, là. This is likely the longest single PSA I have ever talked about on this channel. It goes on for a good five minutes, but it doesn't feel that long at all. It's one hell of an emotional roller coaster, and it pulls no punches in demonstrating just how many lives will change for the worse if you drive drunk. There's really no other way to describe this PSA than graphic. Fox hunting. One of the cruelest sports in existence, up until it was banned in most of the UK in 2005. And it's demonstrated all too viscerally in this PSA, as we're put in the POV of a fox running for its life, only for it to be in vain as it meets the brutal death of being ripped apart by dogs. Then we're treated to some graphic shots of foxes being ripped apart before the PSA understandably urges us to write to our MPs and get this cruel sport banned. Aurea's avond. Wij zijn er klaar voor. Jij ook? 
Objectively Sears' scariest PSA. Not only does the camera work make the triage look incredibly menacing, but the distorted screams of the victims, who are clearly in pain, send chills down my spine as well. While Dutch firework PSAs are typically very graphic, this one turns it all the way up to 11. A warning may come quite unexpectedly. We will now tell you what to do if a warning sounds when you are at home. And then we will explain what to do if you are out of doors. First, if you are at home. If attack is imminent, you will hear the attack sound like this. So take cover at once. Send your young children to the fallout room, then go quickly and turn off the gas and the electricity at the mains. Close down stoves. Damp down fires. Shut windows. And draw curtains. Then go to your fallout room and stay there. If the fallout warning sounds are heard, they will be like these. You should now move yourself and your family to the safest area in your fallout room. That is, you should get inside your inner refuge and stay there. After two days, the danger from fallout will get less, but don't take any risks by contact with it. The longer you stay in your refuge, the better it will be for you. Listen to your radio. Stay where you are and keep listening to your radio. Now, this is what you should do if you are out of doors when the warning sounds. Take cover at once when you hear the attack sound. If you cannot reach home in 10 minutes, Take cover in the nearest building. If there is no building nearby, try to find some solid cover. If there is no solid cover, lie flat in a ditch or a hole and cover your head, face and hands as fast as you can with some of your clothes. If you hear the fallout warning, seek the nearest and best cover as quickly as you can. But before entering the building or cover, brush or shake off any fallout dust you may have picked up and get rid of it. Change your outer clothing if you can. Stay under cover. When the all clear sounds like this it means that you are safe from attack or fallout for the time being and that you can go out again. But keep listening for further warnings or to your radio for further advice.
After an attack is over and the all clear has been sounded, arrangements will be made as soon as possible to treat any people who are ill or injured. Listen to your radio. Details will be given about what to do, when to do it, and how. If anyone dies while you are kept in your fallout room, move the body to another room in the house. Label the body with name and address and cover it as tightly as possible in polythene, paper, sheets or blankets. Tie a second card to the covering. The radio will advise you what to do about taking the body away for burial. If, however, you have had a body in the house for more than five days and if it is safe to go outside, then you should bury the body for the time being in a trench or cover it with earth and mark the spot of the burial. After a fallout warning, you have been advised to take cover in your inner refuge. The first two days will be the most dangerous period because fallout will be at its worst. So it is in your best interest to stay in your inner refuge the whole of that time, however cramped or uncomfortable it may be. But if you must leave the refuge to go to the lavatory or to get more water or food, don't stay out a second longer than is necessary. In any case, don't go outside the fallout room at all. After two days, the danger from fallout will be less, but it may still kill you. So the longer you stay in your inner refuge, the better your chances are. Although it may be fairly safe for you to move about inside your fallout room, it certainly will not be safe for you to go outside the house until the radio tells you. So keep listening to your radio for advice. At first, you'll be told when you can go outside the house for a short time to get rid of lavatory waste and rubbish. Then, as the danger from fallout begins to pass away, you will be able to stay out for longer spells. There may still be a lot of fallout dust lying about, so be careful not to bring it back with you into the house. Keep a separate pair of boots or strong shoes for going out. Before coming in, Take them off and wash or wipe them, soles as well. It is also a good idea to wear rubber gloves while you are outside. Try to keep the younger people indoors as much as possible. In fact, it will be far wiser for only people over 30 to work outside until things get better. And now a reminder of some of the things we have told you in earlier films. Fallout can kill, though you cannot see it, feel it, or smell it. There is danger outside, so don't go outside. Stay in your fallout room until you are told it is safe to come out. These PSAs become even more eerie if you've seen When the Wind Blows, which I highly recommend, although it's a really sad movie. Basically, these PSAs were created so people would w know what to do in the event of a nuclear attack on Britain, although it's unlikely said advice would do anyone any good, well, most mostly because people will go outside because, you know, you spend too much time in one space, you're bound to go fucking insane. The alarm in one of the PSAs is very unsettling, but it's really more the premise of the PSAs that freak me out so much, especially the casualties one, which tells you that if a person... 
in your household dies, you should place them in another room, wrap them up, and label them. These PSAs were essentially a guide to help you get through the end times. La paloma las quita las plumas, las lagartijas las cortamos la cabeza y los pájaros los desplumamos a veces también. La lagartija la quito la cabeza o la cola o se las hecho y se las hecho a la gente. Y los ratones le meten un palo por el culo. Les corto la cola, les saco los ojos, les rajo y les quemo por dentro las tripas. Hay algunos que me las como. Y hay otros que lo que tira boca jarro con ellos, con mis pistolas, bolas. Pues según si son siameses, pues les corto y les quemo las tripas, les saco, les, les se las saco, lo, se las doy a los ratones. Porque me gusta. Porque me gusta y me divierto. Porque me divierte. There's not much I can say about this PSA other than that it's just future serial killers laughing and joking about how they kill and torture animals, along with some graphic, delightful shots of animal corpses. I hate to imagine what these boys became. I hope they got help since the behavior they laugh and joke about is incredibly disturbing. If you don't stop him from raping her, who will? Find your strength. This PSA is all sorts of squick. It's definitely the scariest PSA to come out of South Africa, no doubt about that. It doesn't get much more shocking than hearing a man molest his own daughter over a baby monitor while his wife listens helplessly crying. The more sounds you notice, the more sickening this PSA gets, but that's what makes it so fucking effective. This PSA relies entirely on implications, and that's what makes it so unsettling. We hear the meat being ground and whimpers of a dog, while we're told about the unfortunate East Asian delicacy of dog meat and the torture that goes into the production of it. The PSA ends telling us that dogs are friends, not food, and we honestly should keep it that way. Well, Hong Kong PSAs were never really known for pulling punches, now were they? So why would I expect this PSA to be any different?
Understandably, all Ekpat's PSAs are this creepy, given what the organization seeks to prevent, but this PSA is the creepiest one of all. It shows us the crimes committed in the sale and production of child pornography. However, all the offenders have the face of the one viewing these sick images, who is revealed at the end of the PSA. I talked about this before in my last PSA countdown, but it still holds true that if there's a market for the material these sick fucks get off to, you bet their balls that there are people sick enough to make and sell it. It's just a fact of the consumer market. Unfortunately, there is a demand for sick shit like this. The screams and cries in these PSAs are absolutely heart-wrenching, and while we're not showing anything, the text says it all in demonstrating the horrors of war. I legitimately have nothing to say about these PSAs. They have left me that speechless with their depiction through text of egregious war crimes. Tinggilah tinggi pulang penama Pintu dah kunci, oh rapat-rapat Sudah lama aku mengidam sayang Malam ini aku 
dapat We'll talk to you about this tomorrow, okay? okay. All right, thank you. thank you. See you. See you. Bye. Ah, oh, Mili. So, what is this you're drawing? Let's take a look. Okay. Wow, that's beautiful. That's great. Hey, you want to have some fun? Yes. yes? Okay, I'll teach you a song, all right? Goes like this. My itsy bitsy fingers are tickling your knees. Let's play a game. It's just you and me. Just close your eyes. And don't make the sound. Let my itsy bitsy fingers touch you all around. Ringa, Oh. 我的宝贝在哪里这是我们的秘密。一二三四五六七。Much <sighs> as I hate discussing these PSAs, I must admit they're on here for a reason. These depictions of perverse behavior towards children are so visceral, so vivid, that they make me feel like I'm being touched inappropriately. And the fact that the children are so blissfully unaware to the fact that this is, you know, not fucking normal behavior makes these PSAs all the harder to watch.
Now, these were initially at number 7 on my top 30 scariest European PSAs countdown, but now I feel as though even if it weren't for that first PSA, these are absolutely worthy of being in the top 5. Because those sounds paint a very fucking vivid picture in my mind. The first one, we hear a child bride losing her innocence in the worst way. Then we hear child soldiers losing their lives in the second one. Then we hear starved children being buried. And the fourth one is arguably the second worst as we hear a baby girl being excised. And I'm not going to explain what that is and you don't need to look it up. Or at least I highly recommend you don't look it up. If you or someone you know is a victim of domestic violence or abuse, call Haven. There is help. There is a way out. Everything about this PSA is horrifying, from the dark sapia filtered shots of the clearly broken home, the little girl desperately trying to get help for her bad and battered mother, the muffled quality of the phone call, and the general tense atmosphere of the PSA. But it's cranked up all the way to fucking 11 when the abusive boyfriend shoots the mother right in front of her daughter. It's only made more horrifying with the knowledge that this is a real 911 call and that these events actually happened. We heard a genu genuine loss of innocence in real time in this PSA. This is your final fucking warning to turn back. It's only gonna get more intense from here. You know the next two PSAs are gonna be rough if this one is only number three. But I've seen a lot, and for a PSA to even hit number three, it's fucking intense. Honestly, what scares me so much about this PSA isn't just that this is possibly real footage of dogs being euthanized. It's the sheer eerie silence of this PSA. All we hear are the sounds of the gas chamber and the dogs whimpering trying to escape. And that statistic of 450,000 dogs and cats a year being put to death in this manner... That's nothing to scoff at. It really fucking isn't. Arrival on the scene, how to treat a stab wound. Now, as the blade enters the body, it tears apart the tissue structure. So you need to be ready for a huge amount of blood. Even a small knife in the leg or the arm is likely to sever a major artery. The victim's gonna lose almost half their body's blood within the first half an hour. For every minute after that that they go without treatment, the chances of death go up by 10%. So treat wounds to the legs and the arms as seriously as those to the body or the head. 
You should be familiar with the following common tissues on this stab wound. You can see yellow fatty tissue, brown here is muscle, in the center, bone. Think about infection. The blade may look clean, but it's usually coated with bacteria. The knife injects this bacteria deep into the body of the victim, causing a virulent infection. Here you can see the effects of gas gangrene on a body that's gone untreated. This was the morning after the victim appeared to be recovering from a stab wound to the leg. Now the best case scenario here is that he'll lose his leg to amputation. But if the infection spreads to the rest of the body, the most likely outcome is death. A knife in the chest is usually held fast by the bone and the surrounding muscle structure. If the knife is still in the victim, then don't take it out. The wound may be bleeding freely. If the blood is squirting out, then apply pressure till it stops. You can do this by squeezing together the edges of the wound alongside the knife blade. Try to get the victim in a sitting upright position. This will stop the knife being jolted or knocked out. Now, in many cases, the victim's going to try to remove the knife themselves. Don't allow this to happen. The knife can cause just as much damage on the way out as it did on the way in. So keep the blade in situ, securely, and get the patient to the operating theater. A stab wound to the abdomen the size of your thumb can expose anything up to six meters of intestines. Now, when these become exposed to the air, they may dry out, in which case they'll need to be cut away. An injury to the lower left bowel like this, for example, could necessitate the surgical removal of a large amount of intestine and the permanent use of a colostomy bag. If the victim is coughing up blood or vomiting, then hold their intestines for them to prevent more intestines coming out. Reality is often the scariest thing out there, and this PSA is a fantastic sign of it. These are all real photos of stab wounds, and this is a genuine medical conference on how to treat a stab wound. The speaker is so utterly calm as he describes to the medical students the sheer amount of damage a knife can cause, which is probably an average Tuesday for him given that this is the UK. Yeah, the UK does not fuck around with PSAs relating to knife crime, which makes sense since stabbings there are as common as school shootings are here. Well, boys, girls, and NBs alike, Amateur Hour is officially over. The next PSA here is a doozy and was the unequivocal first choice for the scariest PSA, without a doubt. But before we get to it, some honorable mentions. Keely was my baby sister. She loved pink. We were playing with her dolls. I found a gun in the drawer. It went off. I make Kaylee go away. I hate me. I was pretty torn between including this PSA and Back to School Essentials on this list as number 18. However, I ultimately chose Back to School Essentials. However, I still wanted to talk about this PSA on this list. So that's why it's the first honorable mention. All the PSAs in this campaign are heartbreaking. However, this one is the most heartbreaking since we see how much our young narrator hates herself for this accident. She scribbled out the drawing of herself and says she hates herself for making Kaylee go away. What makes this PSA even more heart-wrenching are the implications that if the gun is still unlocked, or even in the house for that matter, our narrator here, now knowing the damage it can cause, will most likely use it to make herself go away. I'm the sous chef here. With any luck, I should be head chef by next year. I've got this amazing fiance who I won't be marrying this weekend. 
because I'm about to be in a terrible accident. But really, I should have cleaned up the grease over there, and they should never put the deep fryer so close. <laughs> While this PSA has been talked about to death, especially by the North American PSA community, it still deserves to be talked about on this channel. This PSA is 16 years old, and yet the special effects still hold up amazingly. What's slightly overrated in my opinion, and Canada has produced far scarier PSAs than this, for example, Padlock, which if You've seen my older countdowns, you may have recognized as the number one scariest Canadian PSA. And it it's iconic. It deserves to be an honorable mentions because that woman burning her face off with boiling hot water is burned into my head. It's it's a shared memory for all of the PSA community. Will everyone please take their seats? Very shortly, your row will be divided into units of three. Do not obstruct the gangways whilst the cages are installed. There is no cause for alarm. These cages are for your protection. Please cooperate with the surgeons. They will remove your teeth and nails. This greatly reduces the incidence of cannibalism. It is in your interest to comply. Eating, sleeping, and defecating may cause some discomfort, but your space allowance complies exactly with government regulations, and you have the satisfaction of knowing that you are part of one of the world's most cost-effective production systems. You have nothing to worry about. This system has been tested on 45 million specimens, with, I might add, your approval. Welcome to the battery. I love Welcome to the Battery for the same reason I love Blame by Voice, which you may recognize as my favorite PSA. That being how immersive it is, despite it just being a guy talking in front of a minimalistic background. David Graham plays the role of the imposing figure very well, but it may help that he also played the role of Big Brother in Apple's 1984 commercial. This PSA could single-handedly put you off factory farmed eggs for life. That being said, it wasn't quite scary enough to warrant a proper entry on this list. Estas son las dos caras de un mismo problema. Cuando tomas alcohol en exceso, el alcohol te toma a vos. CITEA, Sistema Teleeducativo Argentino. This was the PSA I was referencing when I said Argentina has brought us some really creepy PSAs. And when it comes to my opinion on this PSA, yeah, I agree with the Argentinians, this is probably one of the creepiest things to ever come out of their country. Between the uncanny melpomene and Thaliesque masks and the music, which has this industrial feel to it, this PSA certainly deserved to be talked about somewhere in this video. 
However, that being said, I still found a statue of Creepier, and that's why this one is only in the honorable mentions. And I was lucky my uncle didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me wrong, this PSA is definitely horrifying, and the tentacle is quite a nauseating sight, which makes sense given what it's meant to represent. However, it was beaten out for the only spot I think that it would have fit in, that being number 6 by Stop Nursery Crimes. That being said, it's definitely the scariest PSA to come out of Germany, and it very viscerally represents the trauma that child sex abuse victims carry with them. Said a little lamb to the shepherd boy Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? A child, a child Sleeping in the night He will bring us goodness and light He will bring us goodness and light is this PSA graphic? Absolutely. Scary? Yeah. But there's a reason this is the final honorable mention and not actually on this list. Well, the execution is horrifying. Its message is honestly quite laughable when you look into it. It's basically saying if you have an abortion, you are aborting Jesus Christ. Which I find rather ridiculous, and sorry TV tropes, but you got it wrong on what line of the Bible that the PSA was quoting. It wasn't the golden rule, it was Matthew 25, 31, 46. That being the parable of the sheep and the goats. Also, I can't be the only one who notices this, but it's pretty much... Every single anti-abortion PSA trope rolled into one. Graphic depiction of an aborted fetus? Check. Random religious shoehorning? Check. Still, I do believe it was worthy of being talked about on this list. And now, on to number one. You still have one last chance to back out, because I warn you, this one's a doozy. Warning, the scenes of this film are based on true events. It contains graphic representations that may be offensive or disturbing to some viewers. For these reasons, a stop button has been provided at the bottom of the screen. 
It's all right. It's all right, Dad. I don't need You don't need to say that. It's all right. Look. Okay. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. You don't have to talk. It's all right. There's a love. for you just to pop into the top of your leg? Yeah, okay. Sorry. You're back in a tick, all right? Did it? Okay, great.
Leave it to Australia to create the most horrific PSA of all time, and also the new longest PSA I have ever reviewed, clocking in at 6 minutes and 2 seconds. We see a man with brain cancer forced to suffer through it as his daughter and the rest of his family is clearly distraught, and it was all for naught as he dies anyway. The PSA itself is meant to advocate for voluntary assisted dying, or as we in America call it, assisted suicide. And it worked, as Nia died through VAD in 2019 at the age of 45, rather than suffer from her terminal illness, scleroderma. Arguably, this is the most effective PSA ever, and for good reason. It pulls no punches. If anything were to get the politicians to legalize VAD, it would probably be this. And ladies, gentlemen, and fellow non-binary daisies, we've reached the end of yet another video. I hope you enjoyed this three hours of PSAs and commentary as much as I enjoyed making it. And if you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and if you've done all those things, join my Discord server, link in the description and video. Also, artists, I always appreciate fan art, so feel free to share it in my server if you've drawn any, and if you've done all those things, y'all have a great day! Antonio out, peace, and probably go outside since I've been here too long.